What we've now figured out is for type 1 cross-sections of the production function, the short-run total cost curve looks like this. Dollars, quantity. Whereas for type 2, the short-run total cost curve has an initial concave part before it becomes convex. And this is useful in and of itself. We are going to study short-run curves for their own sake a little bit later. But the way I, the way I motivated short-run curves was to say that they were going to help us get the, the graph, the long-run curve. So we have to go now from the short-run to the long-run, and that's going to take a little bit of time. Let's remember how we got this short-run total cost curve. We had isoquants, and we had an initial amount of fertilizer, F0, and then we figured out what the cross-sections of the production function looked like. They might be uh, type 1 or type 2 cross-sections, and that's what generated the short-run total cost curves. In the short run, you can choose any amount of water and just one amount of fertilizer. In the long run, you can choose any amount of water and any amount of fertilizer. To go partially between, to kind of start stepping uh, in small steps between the short run and the long run, what we're going to do is assume that it, we're going to study a sort of medium run situation where you have any amount of water and exactly two choices for fertilizer, F0 and F1. So we already know what short and total cost curves look like for F0. Now I'm going to contrast that with the short and total cost curve for F1. And then later on, in a few more videos, I'll do other choices for F, like F0, F1, F2, F3. And we, we get closer and closer to the long run, which is any choice of F. Now, I don't need to specify whether I'm studying type 1 or type 2. I can do either one, and so I'll do both. And as we know, type 1 short and total cost curves look like this, and type 2 look like this. And I'm going to label this SRTC naught, and this SRTC naught, and this FC naught, that's the initial amount of the fixed cost. Because at Q equals zero, total cost is equal to fixed cost. So that's with the F naught pounds of fertilizer. Now the question is, how do I draw this with F1 pounds of fertilizer? The easy part is drawing the fixed cost. I have in the lower left-hand graph, chosen F not to be less than F1. It doesn't have to be. I could have made the opposite choice, but that's the way I chose. If you multiply both sides by the price of fertilizer, you get PF times F not less than PF times F1. And the price of fertilizer times the amount of fertilizer is the amount of fixed cost. So FC not is less than FC1. F1 is more pounds of fertilizer, so it has a bigger fixed cost. So FC1 is going to be above FC0, regardless of whether you're talking about type 1 or type 2 behavior. What we don't know is how the rest of it is going to look. We know that type, type 1 is going to have an increasing in convex shapes, so it might look like this. It's SRTC1. But it might, perhaps, look like this and cross, so that SRTC1 would actually cross SRTC0. 
we can talk about the same kind of situation in type 2. In type 2, it might look like this. SRTC1. But it might also look like this. SRTC1. So that you'd have this crossing point. Now, the, the idea of a crossing point seems kind of weird. Let me explain why it makes intuitive sense. If you want to produce no corn at all, Q equals zero, and you're asking what's the cheapest amount of fertilizer to buy, clearly what you'd like to do is buy zero, but you can't. You only have a choice of FC0 or FC1. FC0 is smaller, you want to buy FC0. That minimizes your cost. But suppose you want to produce a huge amount of corn, like 100,000 bushels. And suppose F0 is 10 pounds of fertilizer, and F1 is 20 pounds of fertilizer. If you want to produce 100,000 bushels of corn, do you really think you're better off buying only 10 pounds of fertilizer? Probably not probably you're better off buying 20 pounds of fertilizer. In other words, with 100,000, it's probably better to buy F1, which is 20 pounds, rather than F0, which is 10 pounds. Now, what does better mean? Better means you'll make more money. In other words, with 100,000, your output is fixed, but your costs are co probably going to be less if you buy F1 t 20 pounds than if you buy F0 10 pounds. Now, how can your cost be less if you buy 20 pounds of fertilizer versus buying 10 pounds of fertilizer? Well, your fixed costs aren't going to be less. You're going to be spending more money on fertilizer if you buy 20 pounds than 10. But you could save a lot on water. And that's the idea that if some kind of even mixture of water and fertilizer is the easiest way to grow corn, and if you want to grow this huge amount of corn, you don't want to get stuck with only 10 pounds of fertilizer because it's going to cost you a huge amount in water. It's probably better to buy 20 pounds of fertilizer. It cuts down a lot on the amount of water that you have to buy. And so your total cost is probably going to be less if you buy the the 20 pounds of fertilizer. In other words, f for a really large Q, SRTC1 is probably below SRTC0. And that, for SRTC1 to be below SRTC0 at a really large Q, that's the crossing scenario. That's not the scenario where the, the lines didn't cross. That's the scenario where the lines do cross. The same thing is true for type 2. If you've got a really large quantity out here, it's probably cheaper to buy 20 pounds of fertilizer, so SRTC1 is probably lower than SRTC0. So way up here, SRTC1 is probably lower than SRTC0. Again, that's the scenario where the curves cross. It's not, it's, it's not, it, it's, it wasn't this scenario here where the curves didn't cross. So crossing seems to be intuitively what ought to happen. Now in the next video I'm going to show that the curves actually can cross. Uh, SRTC1 actually can cross SRTC0. We'll do that using the isoquants and that's going to show that not only is the intuitive is is the crossing scenario intuitive but it also definitely can happen